Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Are we really that different? This is a book written by um, John Gray. Um, in the book, he basically talks about the way that men process information differently than women and how they express their love for each other and how sometimes it's hard to communicate to the opposite sex just because of how our brains are chemically formed. So today what I'm going to talk to you about is how our brains work differently, which will explain why we love differently, and then I want you to understand how you love and how to love others. Okay. So um, before we go to the next slide, I just want to read something really quick from um, chapter four of this book. And this really was the premises of the whole book. Um, it said that a man's instinct is to look after himself, even if it means sacrificing others. A woman's instinct is to look after others, even if it means sacrificing herself. In a relationship, a man has to learn to care for his partner rather than sacrificing her needs in favor of his own. And a woman has to learn how to be cared for by her partner rather than sacrificing her own needs in favor of him. So, not to get too deep too early, but sometimes women have a tendency to take care of other people and not know how to let a man take control of the relationship and play his role as a man. So anything you can do, I can do better. That's a common phrase we heard when we were younger when we were fighting with our siblings or cousins. Um, men, I don't know if everyone has heard, but they're better at spatial reason. They're better at um, looking at things from a logical standpoint. We don't like to admit that, but chemically, it's true. Okay. Women are better at analyzing situations. So all of those times where guys, we found out something that you did and you were like, oh my God, how did they know that? It's because we look at things from a different perspective and we everything is connected. So now I want to bring it to our video. Car, that box for the money, that box for the job. He's talking we about a box for you. We got a box for the kids. We got a box for your mother somewhere in the basement. We got, we got this is also the author book. We, we got boxes everywhere. And, and the rule is the boxes don't touch. <laughs> When a man discusses a particular subject, we go to that particular box, we pull that box out, we open the box, we discuss only what is in that box. All right? And, and, and then we close the box and put it away being very, very careful not to touch any other boxes. Catholic upbringing got in there for a minute, but I was... <laughs> I'm not a Catholic, but I went to Catholic school when I was little. <laughs> it did me good, actually. It was a good thing. Now, women's brains are very, very different from men's brains. Women's brains are made up of a big ball of wire. <laughs> and everything is connected to everything. The money's connected to the car, and the car's connected to your job, and your kids are connected to your mother, and everything's connected to everything. And it's like... It's like the internet superhighway. Okay? And, and, and it's all driven by energy that we call emotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the reasons why women <coughs> tend to remember everything. 
Because if you take an event and you connect it to an emotion, it burns in your memory and you can remember it forever. The same thing happens for men. It just doesn't happen very often because, quite frankly, we don't care. So the reason that this happens is because men's brains are processed where, like, the blue part is in men's brains. They process information back and forth between the frontal um, lobe and the back of the brain. Women, they go in between hemispheres. Um, one of the issue, one of the reasons behind that is because women process things with more gray matter and men process things with more white matter. The gray matter is when it's a computational part of it. This is the overanalyzer. Um, men, no, sorry, oh my God, sorry, I missed that. It's the exact opposite. So men think of things in a computational manner. They think of things logistically. It's this, this is what it is, this is how I can fix it, and this is how the outcome will be. Women always think ahead. If I do this, then what's going to happen? This is going to happen if this happens. It's a domino effect for everything that we do. And we don't have the ability to just say, let's make this happen. <clears throat> um, what one of the surveys that I did was over the five languages of love. These are the five languages, and I'll talk about what each one means in a little bit. But first, I want to just give you guys um, a little snapshot of a study that was done talking about the differences between the men and women's brains. So as a whole, the young men had a stronger connection with their cerebral hemispheres, which is in the front, um, while the young women had stronger connections between hemispheres, like I said before. Um, in the journal, in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, they did this study and found that, however, the cerebellum, or the part of the brain below the cerebrum, played a role in coordinating muscle movement, it showed the opposite effect in women. So like, men were very hands-on and had to touch things, and women were very, tell me, tell me I'm pretty, tell me this and that, which brings me to the five languages of love. So words of affirmation. That means that you need to be told how amazing you are, told how beautiful you are, told that you are doing a great job. In the book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, one of the things that they talked about was that when there's an issue with men, they like to be told that they can accomplish it based off of their abilities. So as a woman, you don't need to show them any concern. Like, don't say, oh my god, I really hope you make it to class one time. Say, you're going to make it to class because you are super fast at getting dressed, you know, as a small example. Vice versa with women. Women, we don't want to be told, you got it, it's nothing. You know, you can do this. We want to be told, oh my God, I hope that you can make it okay. I know you've got this, it's all right, everything's going to be okay. Show us concern. So that's words of affirmation. Quality time is exactly what it sounds like. Spending quality time with someone, you don't care what you do, as long as you're with that person, you're happy. Um, acts of service. That would be something like, Acts of um, actually speak louder than words. So cook me dinner to show that you appreciate me. You know, take me somewhere, pay my bills, pay my rent. Um, gifts, that's the materialistic thing. Buy me a pair of Uggs, that's how I know you care. Diamonds are our best friend. Physical touch, that's exactly what it sounds like. I don't really want to get too deep into that, but those are the people that you'll always be hugged up, a lot of PDA, a lot of sex. Um, so men are more likely to be words of affirmation people and physical touch, and women are more likely to be um, quality time people and physical touch. And I found this out in a survey that I did. It's um, five couples, so a total of ten people, plus myself and my boyfriend. Okay, so these were the results. So um, the languages that I put up there from before, um, labels one through five, so that was words of affirmation, quality time, um, acts of service, gifts, and physical touch. And these were the results. It was, like I said, it was only 12 people. I know that that chart was a little confusing because it has the percentages, but specifically, um, there was one person who had, after taking the languages of love test, they scored equally in languages, um, as well as acts of service. So, 
3.5 people scored in the words of affirmation, three people scored in acts of service, four, three people scored in gifts, only half a percentage scored. You're 10. Okay, physical touch. Okay, so I'm going Okay, so your challenge is to figure out how you love and how that you can express your love to your loved ones. This includes your spouses and even your family and your children if you have any. Um, you need to understand how the people around you need to be loved to maintain relationships. And then understand that we are not the same chemically. So when one person says, I can do one thing better than you, that may not be the case. You just go about it in a different way. Thank you.